Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on Mobile Security Concepts and Technologies, Part 2. Today we're going to be discussing the challenges of BYOD, and then we're going to conclude with securing BYOD in the workplace. There's a fair amount of information to go over. We don't have a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. We're going to begin by discussing some of the challenges of Bring Your Own Device. Bring Your Own Device policies, or BYOD policies, allow people to use their own personal devices to conduct official business activities. This does have a benefit for both the business and the people who work there. The business doesn't have to purchase the mobile devices, which saves on expenses. The people who take advantage of BYOD policies get to use their personal devices that they prefer. In addition to that, the people who do use mobile devices no longer need to carry multiples of them. With BYOD policies in place, a person may no longer need to carry two cell phones. On the other hand, BYOD policies can represent some special challenges for security personnel and systems administrators that may need to be overcome. What are some of those challenges? Well, the first one is data ownership. When an employee uses their own device, who owns what data can be a challenge. A clear understanding that company data and applications are always company property needs to be achieved. Then there is device support. Before BYOD, the organization was responsible for supporting mobile devices. Support for mobile devices may still be offered by the organization. However, in most cases, the user is the responsible party. This is especially true with smartphones because there are so many different versions of operating systems. IT really doesn't want to have to support all of them. Then there's patch and antivirus management. The organization must determine how it will enforce patch and antivirus management. These can be a critical part of network security. Patch and antivirus management can be achieved through the use of network access control systems, but the mobile device owner may be required to agree to keep the device's patch level and antivirus up to date. Forensics can also represent a challenge for BYOD policies. In order to ensure the security of the organization, the device owner needs to agree that if a security incident occurs, a forensic analysis of his or her device can be done. This can become an issue with privacy. This can become an issue with privacy. BYOD can also represent some privacy challenges, as in how to ensure the employee's privacy while at the same time keep company data safe and secure. This may become an issue. Most organizations reserve the right to monitor all employee activities, including those activities that take place on mobile devices. This may conflict with personal activities on personal devices. Onboard cameras and video capabilities may also represent a security threat. For security purposes, it may be necessary to require that device owners agree to disable image recording capabilities on their mobile devices. The challenge really comes in in ensuring that they do so. BYOD policies also bring in some architecture or infrastructure considerations. The organization's IT architecture and infrastructure may need to be modified to accommodate BYOD. It may require an increase in the IP address range that is made available through DHCP to allow for the growth in mobile devices. It may require supporting different operating systems, as in Windows or OS X or Windows RT, so on and so forth. And it may require modification to mobile applications to support different operating systems. Currently, there's Windows Phone, there's iOS, and there are various versions of Android that may need to be supported. BYOD may bring up some additional legal concerns. BYOD practices can bring some other legal issues into play, 
This is the reason that many organizations do not allow BYOD. Some of those issues can occur is when the wiping of organizational data off of a device also removes personal data. The people who own those devices don't exactly enjoy it when that happens. Another legal concern that brings up is the challenge of how to separate personal use from business use and personal data from business data. These are all complications that need to be considered when implementing BYOD. It's time to conclude with securing BYOD in the workplace. Adherence to corporate policies is a must if BYOD is going to be practiced in the workplace. Without this adherence, corporate data and systems can be placed at an unacceptable risk level. It is up to the administrators and security experts to ensure that the policies are not only solid from a security point of view, but that they are also followed. All users of an organization's resources, as in data and systems, should agree to follow the policies and procedures. They should also understand the consequences if they don't follow the policies. One of the main policies that can be used to help create a safe BYOD environment are acceptable use policies. These are documents that outline what the organizations consider to be acceptable use of IT assets in the workplace including non-organizationally owned assets. Acceptable use policies may contain several sub-policies, including what is acceptable use of the internet, what is acceptable use of email, and what is acceptable use of any mobile device, as in a laptop or smartphone, regardless of ownership. Another method of securing BYOD in the workplace includes onboarding and offboarding processes. The use of a network access control system can be implemented for the onboarding process. The NAC system can perform a specific check of security items before allowing a device to access the network. The NAC system can also place the mobile device into the proper network channel depending on the type of device that it is. As important as onboarding is, the offboarding process is also vital. Offboarding processes must be put into place to help ensure that when an employee leaves an organization, no organizational data is leaving with that employee on their mobile device. That concludes this session on Mobile Security Concepts and Technologies Part 2. We began by discussing the challenges of BYOD, and we concluded with a brief discussion on securing BYOD in the workplace. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.